Greetings, everyone. I'm Dale Van de Bogart, and this is the Gospel Word. Welcome to the Gospel Word with Dale Van de Bogart, the too good to be true good news of the Lord Jesus Christ. And now, here's Dale. All right, hey, welcome uh, to the broadcast of the Gospel Word. And I, again, I'd like to welcome everyone, especially our faithful watchers. And if you're a first-time watcher, we want to welcome you too. So it's great to have everyone today. Uh, as a reminder, of course, all of our notes are in PDF and located on our file sharing site, Mediafire.com. So just go to our features section on our Facebook page. That's facebook.com slash vdbm.org. And again, in our features section, just scroll and uh, to the right, and you'll see the Mediafire link. And go ahead and click on that, and you'll be able to download all of our notes from all of our broadcasts for the Gospel Word and our former My Thoughts. Now, this is the second week of our three-week series uh, called To Know is to Grow. And our foundational Bible passage, again, comes from 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 1 through 11. Now, this week's segment is called Faith Results in Spiritual Growth. Now, I'm going to discuss the seven characteristics of the godly life that Peter talked about in, in, uh, in verses 5 through 7 in chapter 1 of, of 2 Peter. So why don't you go and grab your Bibles, it doesn't matter if it's paper or digital, and that's where I want you to turn. So again, 2 Peter chapter 1 verses 5 through 7. Now, just a little recap, in our first segment last week, The Christian Life Begins with Faith, now, we learn that faith is in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. He is our salvation, which means deliverance from the enemy. And our enemy, of course, is Satan that brought sin and death to this world. And Jesus also secured us uh, spiritual commodities in righteousness, grace, and peace. Now, we also learn that faith also involves God's power which produces life and godliness. Now, in this new life and godliness, it produces the new person in Jesus Christ. He chose, set us apart, loves us, and forgave us. He also called us to put on eight beautiful graces and, of course, to virtue. Lastly, uh, we also learned that uh, faith involves God's promises, as they are great and promised. See, God will never go back on his promises, and what he says will never come back void. Now, this week, let's look on how faith results in spiritual growth. So, here we go. 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 5-7. through seven. Now, uh, but also for this very reason, given all diligence, Add to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, to knowledge self-control, to self-control perseverance, to perseverance godliness, to godliness brother, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness love. Now, where there is life, there must be growth. The new birth is not the end, it is the beginning. Now, God gives his children all they need to live godly lives. But his children must apply themselves and be diligent to use the means of grace he has provided. Spiritual growth is not automatic. It requires cooperation with God and the application of spiritual diligence and discipline. 
kind of like the old saying, Rome was never built in a day, and neither is spiritual growth. Now, Peter lists seven characteristics of the godly life. We must not think of them as seven stages of development. Now, the word translated add really means to supply generously. In other words, we develop one quality as we exercise another quality. Like the fruit of the Spirit in Galatians 5, uh, verses 22 and 23, these qualities grow out of life and out of a vital relationship with Jesus Christ. So let's take a look at the first characteristic here, and it is virtue. Now the word virtue means excellence. When anything in nature fulfills its purpose, that is virtue or moral excellence. A Christian is supposed to glorify God because he has God's nature within. So when they do this, they show excellence because they are fulfilling their purpose in life. Now, true virtue in the Christian life is not polishing human qualities, no matter how fine they may be, but producing divine qualities that makes the person more like Jesus Christ. Now, the second characteristic of these, uh, of these seven is knowledge. Now, faith help, helps us develop virtue, and virtue helps us to develop knowledge. The word translated means full knowledge or knowledge that is growing. The word he used here suggests practical uh, knowledge or discernment. It refers to the ability to handle life successfully. This kind of knowledge does not come automatically. It comes from obedience to the will of God as we read in the Gospel of John, chapter 7, verse 17. In the Christian life, you must not separate the heart and the mind, character and knowledge. Now, the third characteristic is temperance. Now, temperance means self-control. And I know, easier said than done. Here are two verses from the book of Proverbs that discuss temperance. So, Proverbs chapter 16, verse 32 states, He who is slow to anger is better than the mighty, and he that rules his spirit than he, than he has that takes a city. And Proverbs 25, verse 28 says, Who has no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down without walls. See, Paul in his letters often compared the Christian uh, to an athlete who must exercise and discipline themselves if they ever hope to win to win a prize, as we read in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 24 through 27. Uh, Paul also mentions this in his uh, letter to the Philippians, chapter 3, verses 12 through 16. And he discussed this with, with his protege, Timothy, in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 7 through 8. Now, the fourth characteristic is patience. Well, again, like temperance, easier said than done. See, it is the ability to endure when circumstances are difficult. And believe me, life's circumstances can get very difficult. See, self-control has to do with handling the pleasures of life while patience relates to right, primarily to the pressures and problems of life. The ability to endure difficult people is long-suffering. Often the person who gives in to pleasure is not disciplined enough to handle pressures either, so they give up. See, patience is not something that develops automatically. Believe me, not at all. It's not automatic. Some people might think so, but they're fooling themselves. 
See, we have to work at it. Now, in the book of James, chapter 1, verses 2 through 8, gives us the right approach. We must expect trials to come, because without trials, we could never learn patience. We must, by faith, let our trials work for us, not against us, because we know God is at work, even in the background, even when we don't see it, he's still at work in our trials. Nobody enjoys trials, but we do enjoy the confidence we can have in trials that God is at work, causing everything to work together for our good and his glory. Now, the fifth characteristic is godliness. Godliness simply means God-likeness. In the original Greek, this word meant to worship well. It describes a person who is right in their relationship with God and with others. Perhaps the word reverence comes closer to defining this term. It is the quality of character that makes a person distinctive. They live above the petty things of life and the passions and the pressures that control their lives of others. They seek to do the will of God and seek the welfare of others. Now, we must never get the idea that godliness is an impractical thing because it is intensely practical. The godly person makes the kinds of decisions that are right and noble. They do not take the easy path simply to avoid either pain or trial. They do what is right, because it is right, and because it is the will of God. The sixth characteristic is brotherly kindness, where we find the word Philadelphia, or Philo, and we get the word Philadelphia from that. We all know the city of Philadelphia in the state of Pennsylvania is known as, uh, as, 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 as the as brotherly love, the city of brotherly love. Now, it is a virtue that Peter must have acquired the hard way. And we know from reading the Gospels, Peter learned a lot of things the hard way. And for the disciples of our Lord often debated and disagreed with one another. See, if we love Jesus Christ, we must also love the brethren. We must love everyone else, is what that really means. Here are three verses that I have that command us to show this type of love for others. In 1 Peter 1, verse 22, Since you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit in sincere love of the brethren, or everyone, love one another fervently, with a pure heart. In Hebrews chapter 13 verse 1, let brotherly love continue. And in Romans chapter 12 verse 10, be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love. See, the fact that we love our brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ is one evidence that we have been born of God. And the last characteristic, number seven, is love. See, there's more to Christian growth than brotherly love. We must also have the sacrificial love that our Lord displayed when he went to the cross. See, the kind of love or charity spoken of in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 7, is the, is the term agape love, which means the God kind of love or the kind of love God shows towards lost sinners. See, this is the love that is described in 1 Corinthians 13. The love of the Holy Spirit produces in our hearts as we walk in the Spirit. When we have brotherly love, we love because of our likeness to others. 
But with agape love, or the God kind of love, we love in spite of the differences we have. Now, since we have the divine nature, we can grow spiritually and develop this kind of Christian character. See, it's through the power and the precious promises of God this growth takes place. The divine genetic structure, it's already there. God wants us to be conformed to the image of his Son, as we read in the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 29. The life within will produce that image if we diligently cooperate with God and use the means he has lavishly given us. This amazing thing is this. As the image of Jesus Christ is, re, is reproduced in us, the process does not change our own personality. And we still remain uniquely ourselves. Amen? And I'm Dale Van de Bogart, and I fully agree on God's word. If you're watching this for the first time and you've listened to all seven of these characteristics and you're the opposite of those and you want to change, you want to experience the seven characteristics that the Apostle Peter talked about in his letter, well, the first thing you need to do is to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And you know what? Today is the day you can do that. If you'd like to, you can go to our website or to our Facebook page, facebook.com slash bdbm.org. In the features section, just scroll and find, uh, and find uh, the section of free gift. Click on that, open it up, and read that page. And right near the bottom, we have a prayer that you can say from your heart right now you will accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And you can start experiencing these seven characteristics. You can make that, 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 that 180 turn. And you can go from that old self to that new self. And experience those seven characteristics. Part of the new self. Hallelujah. And if you've done that, you, you, you have... You are, you are born again, and you are a member of God's family. Welcome aboard. Great to have you. And your name will be written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Hallelujah. And you will start experiencing not just those, those seven characteristics that will increase your faith, and you grow spirit, and you will, you will experience great growth spiritually. But there are other things also. And you can also go to our, our file sharing site, mediafire.com. Just download. You can download all of them uh, if you want. All, all of the, uh, the notes that we have up there. And read them so you can grow and grow and grow. Spiritually, your faith will grow dynamically. It will grow uh, exceedingly. It, it's just amazing how your life will change by just accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Let me pray for you right now. Father Lord, we come before you in the name of Jesus at your throne of grace and mercy. And we thank you for this broadcast. We thank you for the gospel word. We thank you for everyone watching this right now. Bless them as they go about their days, Father. And if anyone has never accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior within the sound of my voice, may today be the day that they experience saving faith and accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And, at the, and, our, and our Christian brothers and sisters watching this right now, may they continue to grow exceedingly and abundantly in their faith. May they start experiencing these seven characteristics that the Apostle Peter 
wrote about, that you put on his heart, that they experience these so they may continue to grow uh, spiritually in their walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you, we praise you, we give you all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Wow, wasn't that great? And I hope that you received a huge blessing from this video and the other videos that we have on our YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe as well. Follow us and like us on Facebook. Uh, again, facebook.com slash vdbm.org. So, so, again, you know, thank you for watching. God loves you. We love you. Be blessed.